Okay, if we now think about dihybrid inheritance, dihybrid inheritance is the set of inheritance of two genes simultaneously. So you might have the A gene, which controls the A allele, so you might be A or little a, dominant or recessive, and the B and the little b. Now the important point about this is these are unlinked, they're not on the same chromosome. So all you're dealing with is two bits of meiosis simultaneously. Now, if you start with this genotype, so somebody's homozygous is A and homozygous B. Now remember, these are on chromosome. So in meiosis, they're going to line up in homologous pairs. Here are the A's, lining up there and there. And then here are the B's, and the B's are going to line up again on homologous pairs. Now these are then going to undergo the first phase of phase of meiosis. It's going to get pulled this way and this way, this way and this way. And then these are going to then get pulled apart again. So you end up with a chrome A gamete, which has a chromosome with the A on it, and a chromosome with the B on it. So this is Mendel's first law, which is that of a pair of alleles, only one of those alleles, so here's a pair of alleles, only one goes into the um, gamete. So where do these two come from? Where's the A and the B come from? It's two different... This, these are two chromosomes. This is one from each parent. Because okay. remember, everybody's got two parents, so everybody's got two chromosomes. Everybody got one chromosome from each different parent. Yeah. Now, if you've got the same allele mm -hmm. of the gene, then you're homozygous, homo the same in the zygote, what, which is the fertile. Yeah, from the same. If you have different ones, then you're heterozygous. Okay. Now, if, for instance, You've got sperm, and it's egg. Mm -hmm. So in here, there was the that allele and that allele. And then in the egg, there was this allele and this allele. Yeah. This means you're taking an N and an N, and they're coming together, and they're going to produce a zygote. And this zygote is going to have the A and the little a, and the B and big B. So it's going to be heterozygous for the A gene, and it's going to be homozygous for the B. Now, if you think about then what gametes can this produce, well, this is again Mendel's law, but this is again with Mendel's second law, which is about independent assortment. Well, so that A and that A have to come together, and that B and that B? Yeah, because they're, they're, they are just chromosomes. They are on a chromosome, and when you fuse gametes, so this is sperm meets egg, mm -hmm. you're taking a set of chromosomes, and they're going with another set of chromosomes to produce a 2N individual. And then in you, you've got 23 chromosomes joining the 23 chromosomes to produce your fertilized zygote, the made you, which had 46 chromosomes in you. Okay. So what's going to happen in meiosis is that these are going to line up and then the chromosome is going to line up in homologous pairs. So here we've got the dominant with the recessive and this is the homozygous ones. Now these are then going to get pulled in this direction and in this direction in meiosis 1. So what's going to happen is we're going to produce two haploid daughter cells that are going to contain Little a, little a, that, that is meant to be, and b, and b. So what we've done is we've halved the number of chromosomes because we've gone from four chromosomes here to two chromosomes here. These are then going to get pulled apart again, that way and that way and that way and that way. And then obviously you're going to produce gametes, which are this gamete and this gamete. Now, 
If we then look at the example where we have a heterozygote, so if we took a sperm which had two chromosomes, which had that in and we fertilized an egg which had two chromosomes, which had that in them, then we're going to produce to an individual which is going to have this. Now, the gametes that are going to be produced here, okay. so we look the gametes were big A, big B, well done, and little A, little B, little A, little B, well done, and um, big A, little B, well done, excellent, and big B, little A. Well done. So those are the four possible gametes, and these are produced by independent assortment. Now, if we cross those with this organism here, that heterozygote with that homozygote, so that recessive homozygote, then it's going to produce this. If we then fertilize it, it's going to give you So here we've crossed a heterozygote here with the recessive homozygote and that's going to produce a one which is phenotypically dominant A, dominant B, recessive A, recessive B, dominant A, recessive B, recessive A, dominant B. So now, because we've crossed a heterozygote with a recessive homozygote, we produce a one to one to one to one ratio of the phenotypes.